バラバラドゥドゥルルルバラバラドゥドゥルドゥバラバラドゥドゥルルルドゥルルドゥルルルルルドゥドゥル God has perfected praise God said in his word that out of the mouths of babes thou hast perfected praise I don't know about you, but in my mind, that means all this staged worship, you know, all this fancy guitars, all this praise music that we work so hard on and practice daily or sometimes two or three times over and over and over again to get it right, with all the projection screens, with all the lights, with all the people gathered together. With all of this performance going on like rock stars, you know, in some great Christian world, God doesn't really think that's the best kind of praise. Because you see, the Father, when He created babies, He gave them a pure heart, and out of the pureness of expression of their soul, they would laugh. <laughs> You know, they would giggle. <laughs> you know, they would just smile. They would joy. And they would turn adults into babbling babies. Would you, could you, could you, coo? It's you, 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 baby. It's you. And in so doing, God has given us really what He means by those that worship the Father would worship Him in spirit and in truth. Because it really isn't about. Your 10,000 people gathered together in some giant, oh, kumbaya moment, or some beautiful experience that you think, oh, wow, this is what the Father loves. Not really. You see, the Father loves babes and suckers. God loves those moments of expression when you're not thinking about it, when you're not really planned to do it, but suddenly you just pop up with, Huh, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, just like that. Just like what I did. Just out of the clear blue sky going, huh, wow, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, and a little giggle or a little kind of like quirky thing. And God treats that as the ultimate worship experience. Because He would rather have something that comes out of the pureness of your heart from the experiences you've had with Him than all this planned, canned, practiced worship and identified, you know, Great music from you know the latest, greatest, you know, top ten Christian artist. No, that's not what God cuts, you know, as far as his top ten. His top ten is always the opposite of what man thinks. You see, the Gentiles, according to Jesus, love to exercise lordship over one another. And more often than not, you'll find that great men of God that happen to be worship leaders. At some point in time in their worship experience with God, suddenly realize it's not about their skill. It's not about their talents being offered back to God or the masterful work in ways that they have contributed the lyrics to come to some kind of inspiration from the God of all creation who gives them the opportunity to express to Him their love. No. The reality is they discover that. Alone, one on one, when nobody can see, and they just pop off with something out of their mouth, and they're just playing as unto the Lord without anyone around, they find true worship. And you can ask each one of them, ask any of them, they'll tell you that. Now, their vocation that God has given them in a ministry may be that they have to go out in front of crowds and do those kind of things, but the bottom line is God's perfect praise comes when you're alone with Him. When no one else can see, no one else knows, and no one else is able to understand or comprehend your personal devotion to God expressed in some way. Whether it be just, <laughs> praise the Lord, you know, God, <laughs> that's cool. You know, and you just talk to God in some moment of crisis or some moment of challenge, and you just go, oh, God, I can't do it. I want to follow God's only son. And you start singing some song that you know. Some way of expressing what you're feeling to God. Alone. One on one. 
and all the angels in heaven rejoice. They add their voice to what you're doing in the humility of the moment, in the sincerity of the heart, in the integrity of that special time when only God himself, the Father, can see, know, and relate to you purely one on one. That's worshiping God in spirit and truth. I'm sorry. I know that, you know, there are wonderful, magnificent, you know, great edifices of worship and praise built to the name of the Most High God. But Jesus himself walking into the very house of prayer that God's temple was in Jerusalem said, not one stone would be left unturned. Not one great, marvelous thing that man has done will not be revealed for what the real attitude of the heart is. And I'm sorry, but when we get to heaven, we'll find a lot of the worship and praise really wasn't all it's cracked up to be. But you know, there may be little babes, you know, leading worship more than there will be great men of God that we thought were so powerful, for they've received the reward for being in front of and demonstrating the things that Gentiles seek after, which is lordship over one another, which is to elevate those things that really God would rather we submitted ourselves to. It's better if we were to take our worship leaders and our, our spiritual guides, so to speak, and put them behind the congregation so that they couldn't be seen, than to put them in front of everyone to be idolized, because people will do that. Whether they admit it or not, whether they'll be truthful or factual, the Spirit of God can reveal to you that there is idol worship in worship. There is that lifting up of men of God and worshiping them rather than worshiping the Lord Most High. And God is jealous and a jealous God. He understands how people get carried away, but He also moves in a simpler way. He'll have more to do with the person who is just offering up the simplistic, we think, little tokens of expressions of love to God in some snippet of praise that they just inspired themselves with, like ba -da -ba -da, doo -doo 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 -doo. you know, inspiring that someone to laugh or to sing or to think about God in some little way, which for God is a big way. Because it's not the big things we do for God that he pays attention to. It's the little things of the heart that captures God's imagination. And he expresses to the entire universe his satisfaction over those little things you don't think are important that he thinks are the most important things you can do in the kingdom of heaven. You see, the kingdom of God, God can't create the universe, and he did. God can create the entire span of everything that we can imagine or comprehend and put it right here in the palm of his hand. And yet, he takes the most insignificant, tiny, minuscule part of that universe, you, and he pays attention to it. He says, I am interested in the little things, you, not the great, big, wondrous things, expansion of universe, ever growing and stretching out and reaching out, exploding stars and supernovas and, you know, all the magnificent aspects of how God created the universe. But he says, I want to spend time with you alone, one-on-one, -on -one. you know, just you and me, let's worship. And sadly, Man sometimes puts on his buds, earbuds, puts on his praise tapes, puts on his music, picks up his guitar, and ruins what God intended for you to have, which was just simply praise you, Lord, in some way that you come out of your own heart at that moment. That you somehow, in the intentions of your observation of who God is, you forget to just let go and let yourself express what maybe the inspiration of the Holy Spirit would do for you. It's kind of like what birds do. They just automatically sing. That's what God wants you to bring to Him. Something that just expresses who you are to Him without all the extras that you think you have to add on. Don't go there. Begin to spend that time like a little baby would as soon as you love on a baby, the baby responds. If you smile at a baby, the baby smiles back. If you 
you know, talk baby, talk to a baby, guess what? The baby loves it and takes it in and goes, wow, you know, and starts smiling at you because he thinks, how dumb you look. <laughs> That's the reality of God looking at us. Just express yourself in the simplest ways, and God will show you how important in spirit and truth that worship is to Him today.